Hello, and welcome to episode two of From Zero to Dreamfort. This episode will be going through some preparation all the way through to the actual embark. So let's get started. I'll be keeping this browser open to window to the right over here just to keep track of where we are. To bring up the checklist, go to docs.dfhack.org and scan down to the Blueprint Library help. From here, you can jump to Dreamfort, and from here, you can jump to the checklist. This is our main help blueprint, and over here is the main walkthrough, which, of course, you are more than welcome to read through to get yourself even more oriented about what's going on. So here in the checklist, we are looking right at the preparation steps. And step one is to put together the Embark profile. Now, you could do this by hand, this is optional, but the example Dreamfort profile does give you a good start and is pretty well geared to the Dreamfort experience. So this is just a few tabs over here. Now, what do we do with this? Well, I'll just select the whole thing and copy. Then go down here into your Dwarf Fortress directory, into the prefs subdirectory. You may have some files in here, you may not. It all depends whether you've saved custom settings in the game. And here we're going to edit the embarkprofiles.txt file. Just copy this exact text verbatim into the file and save. And now it's there. All right, we are done with the command prompt. I will just cover that over. And go back to the checklist. So now we're going to bring up the control panel, the, the DF hack control panel, and we're going to set up some settings so that they're in effect for when we start our game. The setup help notes blueprint, which is right here, will help give us some hints for that. So let's open up the control panel over here. And actually, before we start setting these, uh, these tool settings, let's go over to the preferences and set some preferences. Now this run is going to be entirely Armok free which means that no god mode tools will be available to us. So let's turn on mortal mode. That means that every um, Armok tagged tool will no longer appear in the control panel or in the launcher or anything else where you'd look at tool names. Uh, full text search is just useful. This is so if you just type in the uh, a substring, it'll match the substring. If this is left at false, it'll just match the beginning of words. Uh, DF hack tools auto pause game. We don't actually need that to happen. We we can just let the game run while DF hack tools are open. Large number formatting. My favorite is SI suffix. This is just short and compact. Let's save that. And everything else we can leave at the defaults. All right, let's take a look at our automation tab and jump to auto start. These are the tools we want to be started when we embark and Auto Butcher for keeping our livestock numbers in check, and we'll be bringing geese with us, so we'll enable that to raise the limits for, for geese. Auto Chop for managing our logs in stock. Auto Clothing we're going to skip over, we'll be using Taylor below. Auto Farm for choosing crops to plant and raising the limits for uh, pigtail. Auto Fish for making sure we don't send too many people to go fish and overrun ourselves with, with uh, fish and uh, mussels. Auto milk and auto shear for managing um, milking and shearing of our livestock. Auto nest box for assigning female egg layers to nest boxes. Auto slab for engraving slabs when the ghost pops up. Ban cooking for making sure that we don't cook any of the useful uh, food items, such as booze. We don't really want to cook all your booze. And since in our Embark profile, we have, uh, we've brought a bunch of blocks to get ourselves started with, we can disable boulders and logs as generic building materials for building plan. We'll enable clean owned to make our dwarves drop their tattered clothing and go grab new ones. These two will enable later as we have saved met settings to restore. We don't have that yet. Re Auto retrain will make sure that when new livestock is born to non-domesticated parents and those offspring are not domesticated themselves, auto retrain will automatically assign a trainer to them so they don't revert to wild unexpectedly and cause havoc in your fort. Nest boxes will forbid fertile eggs so they don't get gathered for cooking. 
order sort solves a pernicious little bug where if you happen to have two kinds of manager orders for the same item type and the one that appears higher in the list is a daily repeat and the one that appears lower in the list is a bulk one-time order, the bulk one-time order will never get fulfilled. So order sort will keep that bug out of our hands. Prioritize will make the doors focus on important tasks, not only important to them, like making sure that food gets moved, moved quickly, but also important to the player. Uh, tasks that you assign that generally you want to wait for until they're done and they'll waste your time if they don't get done, those will also get prioritized by prioritize, like selecting items for dump or chopping trees. Seed watch will make sure that we don't cook all of our seeds and will dynamically re-enable them for cooking once we have enough. Suspend Manager will make sure that dwarves build things in the correct order and don't <laughs> build themselves into walls or forget to build the corner of the wall first so it's forever left inaccessible. And finally, Tailor, which will make sure that we uh, have clothing available. So it'll auto queue manager orders for clothing when it notes that people are unclothed and need more clothes. All the bug fixes are enabled by default, don't need any to do anything here. And over on the gameplay tab, we'll just enable just a few. It's, here's the standard list over here. Combine will uh, look through your stockpiles and anything that can be combined into one stack instead of taking up multiple spots in the stockpile will be. For example, bolts will be combined into stacks of 25. Booze of the same type will be combined into barrels to the capacity of the barrel, and so on. Uh, Dorfet will allow our animals to get medical attention. And then jumping down near the bottom, we have time stream, which will keep our fort moving quickly even when our population increases. And work now, which goes and pokes dwarves to go pick up a new job when they finish one, so they don't just go off wandering. Now it's not in the list, but there are another two that I like to have enabled here. The first is Agitation Rebalance, which will redo the agitation and irritation system. And for example, once you tr start triggering agitated animal attacks, they won't happen constantly anymore. They'll happen in response to active logging and other noise making operations. So this, this makes uh, irritation just a little more pleasant to handle. And Hide Tutorials, which, you know, we've, we've all been through this before. If this is your first time ever using DF, then you should probably play the game without Dreamfort a couple times just to get uh, get a handle on it. So let's hide all those tutorials and not have the tutorial pop-ups come up everywhere. We also have to enable that here since it's a global. And that is it. All the overlays, or most of them, are, are enabled automatically. And we'll leave those at the defaults. And that's it for preparation. Let's start a new game and bring this back to the checklist for now. I have a world already generated here with a couple forts in it. We'll just build a new fort in there. Are you as excited as I am? Okay. So where do we want to embark? Dreamfort needs some flat area, but most embark areas will have some place that's flat enough for it. If you're embarking in a very steep area next to a mountain, maybe you'll have some trouble. You can still dig out the top of the mountain and create your own flat space, but let's choose somewhere on the plains that isn't so, um, so mountainous. mountainous. Let's see here. Untamed Wilds is fine. I do love those giant animals. And it's nice to have some sand. Where do I get some sand? Here you are. Okay, so we have some sand. I need some clay there as well. Okay, some sand and clay right about here. Where was it? Right here. Okay. Now that you've put the Dreamfort uh, Embark profile, it'll appear right here. But we can also customize our difficulty settings. I usually leave these at hard, just for the challenge, and maybe reduce the frequency of mandates 
and demands because those are just a little annoying. Once you get this set up the way that you want, you can click Save Settings here if you want and also have it automatically apply it for new embarks so you don't actually have to go in and set that every time. And let's click on our Dreamfort profile and we're here. So just to review quickly how this is all set up, our first unit is uh, set up as an administrator. So no skills. Um, they'll use. They'll mostly be used for hauling in the early game because you do need someone hauling. That will greatly increase your efficiency. And we just have other skills here. Mm, prepared to be a, a broker and a manager and other bits like that. And eventually a tactician for a, a skilled raider. Our miners are just set up for mining. And then later on, once they're done mining, they can work on engraving because that's hard to skill up. So we might as well start with someone who has some skill there. Other miner is exactly the same. Our stone worker has stone cutter for creating blocks and stone carver for creating furniture. Our stone crafter, which is different from a stone worker somehow, is going to build, be building our pots and also has a secondary proficiency in mechanics because we will be, be building a lot of, of mechanisms. Our woodworker is going to be doing our carpentry and also our wood cutting. And finally, our farmer will be doing farming and be a secondary stone cutter for extra blocks because blocks are one of the uh, choke points, one of the very important things to get done quickly in Dreamfort. You can set the fortress name, the group name, the symbol if you want. Um, we're just gonna leave those at the default. For items, we're not doing anything too crazy. You may notice that we're taking a bunch of logs because Dreamfort is intended to be useful anywhere and you may be embarking in a place that has no trees. We're starting with some blocks to make sure that our initial workshops can get built quickly when we haven't yet dug, dug down and got boulders to turn into more blocks. And we also are bringing some boulders because sometimes your first couple layers are just not usable um, for stone and you need some extra stone to make into blocks while your miners get down to deeper layers. Everything else is nothing out of the ordinary. Some seeds, some food, some wine. Three ropes for the well and two traction benches. Ropes are just a little bit uh, difficult to, to uh, build in the very early game. And everything else is just bog standard. And then finally, the animals we're bringing are just a couple dogs, a couple cats, and some geese. Nothing fancy there. Let's embark. Here we are. Strike the earth. Now we're going to pause there and that uh, bring this episode to a close. Next time we'll be getting started with our fort placement and initial digging. So I'll see you then.